Hi everyone, how is it going? Welcome to the Tensor Space. Today we will be discussing the paper called FlowNet Learning Optical Flow with Convolutional Networks. This is one of the first papers that uses deep learning for optical flow estimation in an end to end training manner. There are some previous works that used convolutional and pooling layers, but they did not actually train them. They used predefined kernels. So let's dive in. What is optical flow? Optical flow shows the motion of objects between two images or consecutive frames. In sparse flow, motion is predicted for selected objects or selected features, whereas in dense flow, motion is estimated for each pixel. Here highlighted parts represent motion. So the basic idea of this work is given two consecutive images and optical flow is estimated by a neural network. Generally convolutional networks are good at finding features from image or video data. However, in order to identify motion or optical flow, it needs to match the features at different locations of input images. In other words, the network has to find if an object in the first image is at another location in the second image. Because of this reason, the authors developed two architectures, one with standard CNNs and other with an additional correlation layer which is used to find the match between features of two images. Now let's look at the models in detail. Both of these have two parts, contracting part and refinement part. In the contracting part, feature representation and matching information are learned from the input image. In the refinement part, the features are converted to per pixel optical flow prediction. This part is same for both architectures. First one is very simple generic and consist of only convolutional layers. Both images are stacked together like this and passed into the network in the hope that network will learn all the features and corresponding matching information by itself. In the second architecture, there are two identical separated branches to extract relevant features from each image. At a later point, those features are combined and processed further for flow estimation. However, in this specific task, the network should be able to find the matching information before combination. Hence, they have added a correlation layer for this purpose. According to the authors, this layer performs multiplicative patch comparisons between two feature maps. If F1 and F2 are two feature maps, then correlation operation is defined in this equation. This is basically a convolution operation between two feature maps. Assume these are two 3x3 three three feature maps. Let kernel size be 1 for convolution operation and strides for both feature maps are 1. Then the correlation operation can be stated like this. One pixel from F2 performs convolution operation with each of the pixels from F1 and produces a single channel 3x3 three three feature map. Second pixel from F2 does the same operation and produces another 3x3 three three feature map. At the end, when all of the pixels from F2 have performed convolution with all of the pixels in F1, then the feature map with matching information is produced. The size of this feature map is total pixel by height by width and is passed to the next layers for motion prediction. The features from contracting part are also skip connected to the refinement layers. Now in the refinement part, basically feature maps are scaled to original resolution to provide per pixel flow prediction. Up convolutional layer are the basic element of this part, which consists of unpooling layer and a convolution layer. Unpooling layer extends the feature maps and increase resolution. There are four blocks of up convolutional layer and each one doubles the resolution. The inputs of up convolutional layer are feature map from previous layer, feature map from corresponding contracting part and up sampled flow prediction from previous layer. However, after four blocks, the resultant resolution is still less than the original resolution. Adding more layers does not help to get the flow map with full resolution. It does not produce 
better result than bilinear upsampling which is less expensive. In this work, the authors have used a variational upsampling. Variational upsampling was introduced by this work. Let's keep this topic for another video. We all know that neural networks take large amount of data to be trained. Four data sets have been used in this work, Middlebury, Kitty, Sintel and Flying Chairs. The first three are very small and not suitable for neural network training. This is why the authors of the paper have constructed Flying Chairs dataset. The images are collected from the Flickr and 3D rendering of chairs. It is significantly larger than the other three. For the loss function, they have used the standard optical flow loss called endpoint loss, which is defined as the Euclidean distance between ground truth and the predicted flow, averaged all over the pixels. Coming to the results, it is visible that both FlowNet architectures outperform all the models in flying chair dataset, however, struggles in other datasets. As the networks are trained with synthetic dataset, the generalization performance should be analyzed. FlowNet Simple tends to generalize well on the Sintel dataset. However, FlowNet with correlation layer achieves better result in flying chairs dataset. According to the authors, FlowNet with correlation layer tends to learn the features better and can provide superior result if trained on realistic large dataset. Another issue of FlowNet with correlation layer is it struggles to identify motion with long displacement. This is all about FlowNet. The weakness of these architectures has been resolved in FlowNet version 2. Later I will make a video discussing FlowNet 2. If you like this kind of content, please consider to subscribe and like the video and share with your friends. Thank you for watching.